Good morning, people. Watch Woman 65. Lisa Boyce here. I have something that, oh, um, first of all, <laughs> I forgot to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day yesterday. So, happy belated Father's Day. Now, to get into this, the Lord spoke to me yesterday about why people believe, want to come against once saved, always saved. And I was writing down everything that was coming to me. So I wrote this down. It says here, the thing that I finally realized is those who oppose once saved, always saved are opposing the Holy Spirit. Not only are they denying God's gift of grace, which is through Jesus Christ, but denying the very spirit that leads us to the truth, the Holy Spirit. The moment we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, the Holy Spirit indwells in us and shows us all things we need to know. He teaches us. The problem is those who continually oppose once saved, always saved, don't trust the Holy Spirit because they want to say, we have a license to sin. Those who say such a statement is saying that we don't trust. Not only do we not trust in the blood of Jesus, we don't trust the Holy Spirit at all. The gift that God has bestowed upon us through grace, which is Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, is not only eternal life when we get to heaven, but the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit while we're here on earth. He shows us what's to come. He shows us what to say, how to act, and everything. Now, when we sin or do something, do we grieve the Holy Spirit? Yes, and we can feel it because it grieves us. I know this is a confirmation because I looked on Rapture Ready this morning and I found this article uh, is from uh, her name is Natalie Graham her husband was Ron Graham and he was uh, a contributor to Rapture Ready for many years and he died back in 2013 but she wrote this and it says the Holy Spirit is our guide now, um, before I get into this, this rather not too lengthy, I'm going to do the news a little bit later. I am going to come back. But I want to read this to you. It says, people like to be unique. Just go to a shopping mall and you see how unique people like to be. Pink hair, tattoos, clothes that can leave you shaking your head in wonder. You don't need a multicolored mohawk to show your uniqueness. All you need to do is live your life to please God instead of pleasing the world. Those of us who try to please God are unique, even peculiar. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works? Titus 2.14 Jesus redeemed us from all of our sins, past, present, and future, and sees us as a peculiar people. Christians belong to God, which makes us different from those of the world who belong to Satan. If you belong to Jesus, you should be eager to do good works to honor him. Let's take a look at our guide in spiritual matters and indeed in every facet of life. Our guide is the Holy Spirit. The best place to start is in the beginning. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son. He has always existed. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Genesis 1.1 Satan wants us to believe that we evolve from pond, from pond scum, from the bottom from dirt. 
the deaths just one of many lies. We first see the Holy Spirit at work at the creation of all that is. And the whole world, the whole earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Genesis 1-2. Throughout the Old Testament, we see the Holy Spirit at work. But yet, you get into the works-based camp, and you don't hear too much about the Holy Spirit. Maybe you do, but they sure don't trust Him. Nobody loved God more than King David, and his desire was to please Him. But when David chose to sin with Bathsheba, he could have lost his place with God. David was heartbroken over his sin and turned to God instead of allowing his pride to lead him to hell. He said in Psalm 51, 10, 11, created me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. If you read the entire book of Psalm, you can feel the anguish David felt over his sin and fear that he had lost his anointing. As you read through scripture, remember that the Old Testament is a history book. And there are many lessons to be learned by reading and pondering the truths found there. Those men and women looked forward to the coming of the Messiah and God worked with them in every in in a very different way than he works with us today. The cross and the blood changed everything. We live in a very unique time. Christians have a blessing that nobody had before the cross, nor will have after the rapture. We are indwelt, indwelt with the Holy Spirit when we make a true, honest profession of faith in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is sealed. This is why you can never lose your salvation when you make a true, honest profession of faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you will never lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit is sealed within us, and our salvation is secure. God knows if you really, if you really meant the words, or if you were just choosing to please your parents or someone else. Or maybe you were in a bad situation and promised God that if he got you out of it, you would follow him. If you didn't mean the words, you aren't sealed with the Holy Spirit. And God knows your heart. On the other hand, if your profession was sincere, then you, in, you are indwelt and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now he would establish us with you in Christ, hath anointed us in God, who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. 2 Corinthians 1, 21-22. We are sealed until the day of redemption, which is rather fast approaching. I just wanted to let you know that. When the Holy Spirit is sealed within you, it is an unbreakable seal. Does that mean your troubles all go away or you never sin? Absolutely not. Trouble and temptations will come our way. You'll have to make a choice of choosing to follow God's will or follow Satan's ways of worldly actions. The Holy Spirit will guide. I've always said this. The Holy Spirit will guide your choices, but you need to listen to him. How do we listen to him? We study the word and pray. 
This is God's way of telling us how we're to make choices. And the Holy Spirit will illuminate scripture. I know he will because he's done it for me time and time again. We still have the right to refuse and listen. And our poor choices hurt God and grieve the Holy Spirit. And it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Ephesians 4.30. Now, this is going to help somebody. I don't know who. But I was going to do another story about the uh, crime that's going on right now. But the Holy Spirit wants me to do this to let somebody know that you don't have to worry about your salvation because you are sealed until the day of redemption. Now she goes on to say here, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. But you must understand that he will never tell you to do anything sinful. The Holy Spirit will never tell you to do anything contrary to the word of God. Too many people who profess to be Christians still follow the world in thoughts and actions. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. I just want to let you know, because the Holy Spirit is leading me to tell somebody that he is listening and he is real and that he wants to help you. If you keep your thoughts on worldly matters, which we all do, you won't hear from the pure word of God. You run the risk of twisting scriptures to fit your worldview rather than fitting your life to God's ways. Prayerfully study scripture to find out how God desires for you to act. That's what the Holy Spirit is going to do. He's going to teach you. Scripture is very clear about sin. Period. There's no two ways about it. And I know too many people who take scripture out of context or twist meaning so they can justify their favorite sin. It takes humility for a person to admit they're wrong. Humbly go before the Lord and ask forgiveness. Turn away from your sin, even if it means losing friends. It can be done through strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. See, these people who want to say that once saved, always saved is a, is a false doctrine, or once saved, or we just have a license to sin, twist it around to them. They want a license to sin, and they want to do what they want to do. But those of us who are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, we know we don't have a license to sin, and we don't want a license to sin. We want a license to serve God. But the people in the workspace camp, they're the ones who want to take out the scripture because they want a license to sin. Remember how the Holy Spirit lives in you and when you choose to ignore him and sin, you take God with you into that sin. No matter how hard you try to justify your action, sin is sin. And God doesn't excuse your sin because you've got a good reason for your actions. He may not excuse you, but he will forgive you. And you will lose rewards in heaven. The Bible says if we confess, which, is, which people have Confuse, like I said yesterday, confuse confession with repenting. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We say that we have not sinned and we make him a liar and the truth is not in us. 1 John 1, 9 through 10. The Holy Spirit will always 
without fail ever lead you along a path of righteousness. Listen to him. Listen to him. It was God the Father who sent the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whosoever I have said unto you. John 14, 26. Christians are blessed to have received the gift of not only eternal life forever and evermore, but the Holy Spirit here on this earth. We are sealed. Praise God. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. If you don't remember any verse, remember that verse. Those who doubt that you can lose, that who think that you can lose your salvation. John 10, 27 through 30. Those who follow Christ have this assurance of security. It won't always be that way. The coming days when Christians will be raptured. Now, nah, this is where people who are going to be left behind. Because the dispensation, this dispensation of grace is coming to an end. The, they're coming a day when Christians will be raptured and the Holy Spirit won't indwell people anymore. You can believe it or not. I know people want to argue with me about that, but it's true. Because the coming, this is, we're in the dispensation of grace. We're in the dispensation of grace. The Holy Spirit indwells in us. It is grace. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection on the cross that God gave us. Guess what? We're about to be raptured. Praise God. This is why those who right now accept his death, burial, and resurrection, you will be saved and you will be indwelt with the Holy Spirit, his gift. Eternal life and Holy Spirit are God's gifts to us who believe. Praise God. He will still be very active. And people will come to know Christ during the tribulation period. But the sealing of the Holy Spirit, listen to this, the sealing of the Holy Spirit won't happen anymore. That's why the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. So, my thing to you, don't wait to truly change your mind and ask Jesus for his gift of salvation. Admit you're a sinner in need of a savior. Believe, believe on the finished work of Christ. Don't think like some people, oh, I'll wait until the rapture and I'll do all that later. Go ahead, you wait. Because I guarantee you, you will die. You'll die. Because in the tribulation, there's one man that's going to be in power. And he's the Antichrist. Like Nikolai Carpezzi in the movie Left Behind, he's going to be in charge. And you're going to accept him. And you're going to think that he's the Messiah. And he's going to probably kill you. I'm just saying, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait. The blood of Jesus saves and the Holy Spirit seals you. Trust Jesus now and follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit throughout your life. You'll be eternally glad you did. 
I'll be back later with another news story. Thank you.